Okay, welcome to our destination series. We are on number seven of our destination series where each week we um, choose a different um, uh, destination and we talk about it. We've, we've gone over our 2021 calendar so far, Patagonia, Utah, Kilimanjaro, Everest Base Camp, and uh, last week we did Machu Picchu. Each week, uh, the following Friday, they come out and um, on YouTube. So you can watch them on YouTube the following uh, week. Yesterday, Machu Picchu came out. And today we're gonna talk about the Alps. So as usual, what I'll do is share my screen here. We're going to do our, our uh, Alps trip, Matterhorn to the Mont Blanc is what we're calling it. For a number of years, we have done the Tour de Mont Blanc, and we still do. Um, and we switched and uh, built a brand new trip. This kind of a bespoke trip that we designed that uh, showcases and highlights some of the Alpine villages as well. And I felt that with our guests, one of the things that we were realizing is that we weren't being able to spend enough time in the small Alpine villages in Switzerland, Italy, and France where this trip takes place. So uh, we wanted to um, switch it up a little bit and we designed a trip that uh, I'll go through here and um, does uh, give us all evenings in those Alpine villages. So it's really nice. Uh, what you do is you're going to fly over to Geneva, Switzerland here with the big red X and you land in Geneva, Switzerland. And we start from there and uh, we either pick you up at the airport. Some people decide to fly in uh, a day or so early and do a little extension on the front end. And we have extensions on the final of the trip as well. So we'll go over both of those. And then we're going to spend our time in Switzerland, Italy, and finish in France. Um, the first night, we're going to start in Geneva, Switzerland. And I see that he's on the line. I want to welcome our special guest this week, Cesc Guerra. Hi, Cesc. Hi, Dean. How's it going? Laura's here with me. Oh, hi, Laura. Hi, Dean. How are you doing? <laughs> well, your picture's on the screen here, and uh, thanks for joining us. Sess and Laura are good friends, and like many of our guests, they have been on multiple trips, and we spent have spent so much time together on different adventures, and uh, you guys are from Houston, Texas, so thanks for, for joining us remotely here. Of course. Got, Definitely. We got to meet... Uh, I, I believe it was 2009 on Kilimanjaro. Is that right? 2010. 2010. Okay, so 2010. Here they are on the top of Kilimanjaro. And here they are some, somewhere in the Alps. I think that one was just last year. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah. 2019. Machu Picchu, Utah, Everest Base Camp, sailing, and then uh, Kilimanjaro. And then last year, or or so we were in the Alps. Yeah, at this pace, all we have to do is hit Antarctica and Australia, and we've hit all seven continents with you, Dean. Awesome. Well, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. It's it's great to have you guys, as always, on every trip. And uh, I'm going to go through a presentation, and then as I do, I'll have you guys interject on your experiences that we shared. Okay, I put a lot um, of pictures yeah, of you guys in Laura here. Laura may need to bug out. She's got to get to the airport, but uh, she'll be here as long as she can hang in there. Excellent. Well, here we are last year in the uh, in the beautiful Alps, and there's you guys taking lunch, I believe, in Zermatt. You know, oftentimes people want to know what the best time of year for us in the Alps, June, July, August, September, is prime time for this trip. Uh, the summer months, uh, we can go into the beginning of October, but we do run into uh, chance of a early season snowfall. So we try to avoid that and hit the, you know, the, uh, the nice times of year. And people think about the Alps as being crowded. And again, on all of our trips, we're going to really spend times out in the mountains hiking far from the crowded trails, the most popular areas. And uh, this is a picture of the Chamonix Valley. And um, on this trip, you can see these cables here running up to the mountain. It's typical on this trip that we're going to use lift-assisted 
uh, hiking to get us up to this higher alpine terrain so we can explore the high alpine above the tree line a lot of times. Sometimes we hike through the trees, but uh, a lot of the times we'll use a series of lift depending, depending on the day. The early arrival extension that we do for this uh, is really nice, where when you arrive in Geneva, Switzerland, we help make the train arrangements for you to uh, just go on the train to St. Moritz. And um, you guys did this, right, Sess? Right. Uh, we flew into Zurich and then uh, transferred down to St. Moritz and then took the Orient, the, the Glacier Express, across to um, Zermatt. And it's pretty amazing train, huh? Pretty amazing day. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing. It's a, a, a great experience. And um, uh, uh, getting over the jet lag was is always important for us. So we like getting in early and then getting a, a different vibe in St. Moritz was really cool. So, so then what we do is uh, the Glacier Express train is this full day. I think it's six hours. Uh, train ride that they serve lunch on. There's a few different cabin classes. Um, definitely want to book this early. So we help do that because it does fill up. And it just slowly meanders past all the glaciers and through Switzerland and, and right on into Zermatt where we meet you at the airport. Port. Um, one of the things I noted on the train that, station. At the, right at the uh, train station. That's right. Sorry. Um, Zermatt is uh, accessed only by the train and there's no motorized vehicles in this village. So it's just a classic uh, um, Swiss Alpine village. And we start our trip there. And I didn't note on this presentation that, you know, here we're at 5,276 feet. And this is typical through the Alps. It's not really a high, high altitude adventure. Sure, we've got altitude and we climb up higher above that but it's not an extremely high altitude. So acclimatization is, is done pretty easily um, during the trip. So we're gonna meet you at the train station, or if you're coming in on the scheduled day, we're going to pick you up at the airport in Geneva, and we're going to then uh, transfer across to a village called Tosh. And then from Tosh, we're going to take the train on in to Zermatt. So um, it's typical on all of our adventures that uh, this one is hotel based. So we're not staying in mountain huts. We're staying in beautiful uh, four star European accommodations throughout. And the hotels are great. Wouldn't you agree, Sess? Can you? Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, uh, the experience, uh, the greeting uh, experience from the train uh, at the foot of the Matterhorn and going to the hotel in the little village of Zermatt is just really breathtaking and something that's very memorable. I'd say that one of the things that we tried to do for this trip is pick hotels that are right in the heart of all these Alpine villages that we're going to go through. And it gives people the chance. Of course, we have a lot of things that we're doing, but there's a lot of free time for you to explore, shop around, look around, and just take in the culture in the different areas. Um, here's one of the restaurants that we go to. As well, we've hand selected all these different restaurants that we'll dine at throughout our journey. Um, this one being in, in uh, Zermatt. So this is what they call a funicular. So a funicular is a train that goes right up through the mountain um, in Zermatt. This goes up through the, the mountainside and pops out on that high alpine area. So it pops out, we'll, we'll take the funicular up. Sometimes we'll do a funicular to a gondola. And then at the top of the gondola, we'll be high above. You can see the Matterhorn in the back uh, around here. And uh, here's a picture of Sess and I actually hiking on the Five Lakes Trail. Amazing day, huh? Oh, unbelievable. Um, and it, it, I think it's the first time that Laura and I had uh, had done something like that where we, we took the funicular up and then started the, the hiking a part of the, the day uh, on the high alpine and that was that was pretty nice yeah it's it just kind of gets gets us to the great hiking terrain on this one we pack a lunch uh we hike past five different alpine lakes and just wind through all these 
amazing views of the Matterhorn and Mount Rosa. We're high above Zermatt. You can see the clouds down below us. Just a fantastic day. Then at the end, we're going to take the funicular back down, gondola back down, funicular back down, and then have the early evening before dinner to explore uh, Zermatt and see the Alpine Museum, or there's plenty of shops and things to see and explore around this town. So we're gonna spend the second night in the hotel there. So two nights in Zermatt, the arrival night, we'll always have an orientation brief, go over all the details of the trip. We have our hiking day, come down, we'll go out to dinner that evening. Um, then the following day, we're going to uh, take the train out of Zermatt down to our vehicles that are at the small village below. And it is nice, you can see in this picture in the upper right, a rolling suitcase, a rolling duffel bag, and a small backpack is all you really need on this trip. If you do need to do some laundry or something, that's easily done because we're in hotels every night. We'll transfer, the, the drives are all an hour, an hour and a half maybe, really reasonable. We're in a kind of a tight vicinity throughout and we go to the Col de Forclaz here. We start our, our hike through from the Col de Forclaz. Um, you can see on this day, we're coming into this hut along the way. I think we had packed a lunch this day, and um, we, which we do a lot. And then we'll probably come into the, uh, the hut on this day and have a coffee and take a break, maybe a spritzer juice or something like that, and make our way to this small village here called Shampax Lake. And um, yeah, that, was, well, that was one of the best picnics ever, Dean, uh, just <laughs> sitting sitting on the Alpine Meadow, having a picnic lunch sound of music. was just uh, incredible. That was like the sound of music. Yeah, it is absolutely just breathtaking. Uh, in this photo here, we're, we're looking down at Martigny at the start of our hike, Martigny, Switzerland, these huge Alpine meadows and just beautiful terrain. Then we start to come into the Champax Lake Village with all these little cuckoo clock Swiss type uh, mountain huts and, and uh, it's just fantastic. It's a great, another great hike. And um, after we get to Champax Lake, we uh, do a short drive, less than an hour to Verbier, Switzerland. And uh, we pull up into Verbier, Switzerland and spend the evening there. Of course, that's a pretty good hike that we took that day, eight, nine miles and uh, hilly terrain, but we're not at extremely high altitude. And by the time we get to Verbier, we really just settle into our hotel, have dinner at the hotel and uh, rest and relax for the following day. You can see in the upper right picture, uh, the hike we do the following day. Uh, Verbier is about 5,000 feet. So again, not terribly high. You can see Verbier in the lower left hand uh, corner of the screen. And we're gonna take a gondola out of town here where my, where my little pointer is up to the uh, kind of upper right here, you can see the top of the gondola over here. And then we take this trail that just winds across. You can see Cess and actually Laura here and Cess hiking across um, about five plus miles over to the main part of the wintertime ski resort. And then when we get to the wintertime ski resort, we've had a great hike for the morning. And then we take a gondola to a chairlift and then two of these aerial tramways all the way to the top of what they call the Mount Fort. And um, it's stunning up there. Wouldn't you guys agree? I mean, uh, un unbelievable. Um, yeah, just some fantastic panoramic views. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, just a, a great memory for us to be up there. The um, top of the Mount Ford is the hut on the right-hand side. And uh, there's a big observation platform you can see here on the left. And if we look out in the far corner here uh, where my pointer is, that's the Mont Blanc in France. And then off the other side, we're looking at the Matterhorn over here. So we've got all of the Alps that we're looking from this direction and this observation platform. I don't even know where we ate our picnic this day, but somewhere along the way. And it was uh, there, it was there, Dean, right there at the uh, right hut. On, on the top. Okay, so we, we ate up top and yep. then uh, 
we descend back down the aerial tramways, back down the gondolas to a different gondola that takes us right back to the heart of Verbier town where we pick up our vehicle. And then uh, we do a short drive from Verbier, Switzerland, up the valley and over the Grand St. Bernard Pass. So this is the oldest hospice uh, in the world. This was the start in, in the, you know, uh, like 10, 1090. They, they started these this uh, monastery up here. And there was uh, pilgrims that were making the pilgrimage into Italy and they had a hospice. And this is where the very famous dogs, the avalanche dogs, which I've worked a long time, but the St. Bernard dogs would find travelers that were having a hard time making up, up over the mountain pass um, and find them in snowstorms or avalanche problems and things like that. So this is the lower right is the hospice and the area up at the uh, St. Bernard Pass. We go take a little bit of a tour and look around in there. And then we drop on into Italy from Switzerland. We drop all the way down to Aosta, Italy, which is uh, the Aosta Valley. The Aosta Valley is, uh, uh, has a lot of Roman um, history to it. And we stay again right in the heart of Aosta, and we're we're just about two thousand feet. So again, the altitude is no problem. We had we did a, a a tour one of the one of the days here of the Roman ruins and the old city that's buried underneath of the new city. Um, go out to dinner, and one of the things that's really nice in in this part of the journey is. These are areas that are less frequently visited by Americans. So we're really just in the uh, European culture, which is really nice. Spend the evening. And then the next day, we do a short drive up to Kong, Italy. So another amazing Alpine town. You don't even know it's there, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, very quaint, um, totally walkable. Uh, really nice, and uh, it's a nice uh, little uh, stroll over to the uh, gondola up for the hike. Yeah, so if you see my pointer right here, that's the lower uh, station to the gondola that goes up this cut through the forest, drops us out on top, and then we do this amazing hike up around this upper ridge line. And uh, we've done it a few different ways. You can hike back into town. You can come back around, take the gondola back down. But we're looking now at the Gran Paradiso National Park. It's the oldest national park in Italy, in all of Italy. And uh, Gran Paradiso Mountain, all the glaciers. We come back down. We, we visit a number of waterfalls. I think they, you know, uh, the, the town often has a lot of things going on in the middle of town. You can see Laura on the summit of our peak there in the low part of the screen. And, and just a fantastic uh, day up there outside of Kong. And, um, you know, wherever we do these hikes, there's oftentimes these alpine huts that are associated where, where we are, where we'll either take lunch or we'll pack a lunch. If we pack a lunch, we're basically going to the bakery to to get sandwiches, quiches, cakes, things like that. And uh, just really enjoy the outdoors. It is absolutely stunning. And uh, the summertime is an amazing time to do it. So after we come down from Kong, we, uh, we've moved on now from Aosta. Uh, and after Kong, we're going to get back in our vehicle, drive about an hour to Comayer, Italy. Comayer is on the... Uh, south side of the uh, Mont Blanc, and uh, which is the highest point in Western Europe. And um, Colmayer is just in another amazing little um, Alpine village right up there in the Italian Alps. And we'll uh, stay um, in, a, in a hotel right in, right in the uh, cobblestone streets once, once again. And then the next day we hike up to the Elisabetta hike Absolutely amazing. Another just amazing hike, huh? I mean. Yeah, everyone is amazing. Everyone is uh, chock full of great views, vistas, and, and um, you know, it's just, it's an unforgettable trip for sure. 
So you can see us hiking here. We're going to wind our way up. We're going to make our way to the Elizabetta hike uh, or uh, refuge up in here. This hut um, is where we'll take our lunch. Um, we're, we're mixing it up each day. Sometimes we'll pack a picnic lunch. Sometimes we'll know that we're going up to a high hut and we're going to take lunch up at the high hut. Um, you can see our hotel here in the upper left, right on the edge of town from town, the amazing views of the south, south side of the Mont Blanc. And um, yeah, just another great, you know, this this lower left corner is, is another uh, great lunch in a little hut up high in the Alps. And uh, really great food, uh, great atmosphere, great hiking. I mean, it all kind of comes together here on this, on this trip. And uh, then the next day, what we're going to do is this is a, a, a picture of the Mont Blanc and um, the highest point, 15,771 feet. Um, I've been able, I've been lucky to climb it to the top. I've skied it from the top. It's, it's got a lot of adventures here. Um, what we're going to do is from the left side of my screen where my pointer is, we're going to leave Comayer, Italy. We're going to drive through the Mont Blanc tunnel that goes right through uh, the mountainside and into France. And we're going to pop out on the other side in Chamonix, France. And uh, Chamonix, again, uh, one of the high alpine villages over there, but only 3,300 feet above sea level. So again, we're, we're really comfortable acclimatization wise. And uh, that helps us be able to hike more. It helps us to be able to hike longer, maybe do uh, more mountainous terrain because we're not struggling with high, high altitude, higher altitude on our hikes, about 8,000 feet, 9,000 feet. Um, so that's really nice. We come out into Chamonix and Chamonix is the, uh, the birthplace of alpinism, you know, since, you know, the, 1100s they were starting to uh, climb in the mountains over here and uh, explore the mountains. This is the Mont Blanc. This is the top of the Mont Blanc right here and uh, the village of Chamonix down below. Uh, we'll spend the next couple of nights over here and um, as we go and get ready for our hike on this day we've left Italy. We're now in France. Uh, we'll swing by the bakery. We get some quiches and cakes and, and sandwiches. Almost hard to decide, wouldn't you guys say? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, the, the sandwiches are the sandwiches. just <laughs> over the top. Uh, well, I, I had a quiche every day for lunch. It's so delicious. <laughs> I ate the whole Ooh. thing by myself. <laughs> They're small. They're not too big, but uh, fantastic. Yeah. We, we'll, uh, this little village on the lower left is called Latour, and it's in the top of the Chamonix Valley. And uh, we're going to take gondola out of Latour. Yeah, I got a picture here. So here's Latour, the top of the valley where my pointer is. We take this gondola up. We get a chairlift up to the, to the top right here. And then we hike from the top of the gondola where we're, where if we think about it now, we were in Italy this morning, we're now in France, and we're going to hike over the Col de Blom uh, uh, into Switzerland to La Croix de Fer and uh, the Iron Cross. And, uh, you know, the views are just amazing. We're now, um, this is from one of the high alpine meadows, I believe, when we're coming down, we're looking out at the Mont Blanc, Chamonix down here. Argentier, the back of the Drew over here, and uh, just stunningly beautiful. You can see the the glaciers up high and the areas where the glaciers have receded and the rock is just scraped down. Um, amazing hike, though, as we come across this ridge line. Um, I think uh, you find you can see uh, the lower picture there. I think that's Laura. And, uh, you know, a bit of a scramble, but, but really fun right up totally to that doable. Iron Cross. Totally doable, just unbelievable. And um, uh, I want to go back. <laughs> um, so from the Iron Cross, now we're looking back into Martigny again, Switzerland. We're actually in Switzerland. And, um, you know, we again here will 
have our lunch packed. We use the, uh, the lifts to get us high to the terrain so we can get a really uh, amazing hike in, uh, a solid hike in, but all of the uh, alpine views and um, all of the big mountain views and uh, use the uh, lift system that they have in Europe to really help enhance our full days. Um, that evening will, you know, sometimes we'll come around and hike all the way back down into Latour. Other times we'll hike back down to maybe the mid station and take the uh, gondola back down to Latour, or we can even take the chairlift down to the gondola and back out. And we can do that on a lot of these different hikes. Um, we're going to have the evening here in Chamonix. And uh, Chamonix, you know, beautiful alpine villages. Uh, and this is a spectac spectacular one. Um, we'll go out for dinner. There's a lot of places to go shopping around, looking around, lots of neat things to see and do in the evening times. And that's why we really like to base out of these uh, alpine villages is just so you can spend the time on our Tour de Mont Blanc trip we would often be passing through the villages and we realized that people really would like to stay there and have the time to spend um, when they do because they're spending the night there to look around. Then the following day, what we're going to do is uh, um, take the Aguida the Medi tram up. And this is right out of Chamonix. It goes up to uh, the top of a tram station, about 3,000 feet. And then from there, it ascends up another aerial tramway. And we top out, you can see 12,602 feet above sea level. And uh, pretty amazing views here, huh, Sess? Uh Incredible. Uh, just uh, amazing to take that tram up there and, and make the, uh, the ascent from, um, uh, you know, 3,000 uh, feet up to, to over uh, 12,000 feet in, in just uh, a short uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, and, and like an engineering marvel. Uh, these pictures really don't do it justice, but uh, there is a number of, there's a glacier museum up there inside the mountain. Um, there's a number of different tunnels through the mountain. They go to different observation platforms. Lower left, you're looking up at the amazing views of the Mont Blanc. Right to the south, you're looking into Italy and what would be uh, down into where Comair would be, a little over the, over the way uh, side. But the aerial tramways put us in a great position. You can see from the picture on the right, you know, where we land at the top of the tramway here on the right hand side of the photograph and then all the different tunnels and elevators and different platforms that we visit. So it's not like a, a ride up there where we go spend 10 or 15 minutes. We, we kind of spend some time taking in all these different observation platforms and looking around at all the different sites from the top. So on the picture on the left, if you look at that one little platform, that rock knob there where my, that's like right here. So that's just one little view off of this thing and, and just absolutely uh, stunning uh, in every way. Then in the afternoon, what we're gonna do is uh, take the two aerial tramways back down. You land right in the center of Chamonix. And then we usually let uh, people have a free time in the afternoon here. And, uh, you can stroll around, go out for lunch, um, visit a lot of the different terrace restaurants and, you know, the Alpine Museum. There's just a ton of things to see and do. Um, and we know that guests want to have some of that time. We've had a really busy week of hiking and exploring, and it's really nice just to have some of that. You can see in the right hand corner of the screen, the, um, the early uh, alpinists that are, are pointing up to the top of the Mont Blanc. So uh, a lot of history there. This evening, we have a couple options. We, we uh, do a, a dinner, a group dinner, um, but we also have an option to do a group cooking class. And uh, this is something that we've just added as a request from uh, one of our groups and uh, found a, a really a restaurant that does a cooking class. And we're looking forward to uh, working with them this summer. We've got one, two, three, four, five of these trips, uh, mostly full. 
for late summer in the summer through the fall. So we're hoping that we can travel and travel comfortably over to Europe uh, by the fall and summer, late summer, August season. There's a couple spaces here and there. So contact us if you're interested or this is one that we can set up for next year. And then um, on our final day, this trip is uh, eight nights, nine days, and we're just moving throughout. We uh, have a couple nights where we'll spend two nights in Zermatt, then uh, Verbier for one night, Aosta for one night, Comair for one night, a couple nights in Chamonix. And um, we move around throughout. And then in the end, you can see this is uh, the heart of Chamonix where we're ending the trip. There is the extension for people that if you'd like, where you can stay where we finish in the hotel for another night or two nights, because the uh, drive back to the Geneva airport uh, into Switzerland is only about an hour away. So we just help with the shuttle back to the airport at the end. If you wanna spend a couple additional days, we can arrange guided hikes, but there's also a number of other activities, but even guided hikes or going up to the glaciers and going into the ice tunnels. There, there are a number of things to do here. So there's no shortage of different things to do if you do want to extend your stay because you're already there. Uh, we see that quite often. Hey, Sess, do you want to add anything about this trip? I feel uh, like Talk to yeah, I, I just love it. Uh, the the end was kind of like the cherry uh, on the top of the pie with uh, going up to a, a Guy de Midi. That was awesome. Uh, Chamonix is a sportsman's paradise. Um, you know, you, you had all those paragliders, all the, the shops and stores for hiking and, and um, outfitters. I mean, it was just an amazing little town. And um, uh, we we just loved the 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 itinerary was ambitious but steady and um, you know I, we never felt rushed at any point in time and uh, we got to enjoy uh, the sights and sounds and the, the the flavors of 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 those three countries all in one trip it was it was fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's it's a it's an um, like I said in the uh, we put out in the newsletter today. Really, uh, hiking paradise, hiking up to the huts and having lunch, and then hiking back or taking a lift back out. I mean, you cover some terrain. It's really really fun. Um, yep. yep. See the different countries. So so basically, guys, what we do is for every trip, uh, as as I've said on every one of these destination series, we'll send you a a trip detail. We're happy to send this to you. Even if you're not signing on, it's just got a lot of information. It's no secrets that we need to keep. Um, we'll always uh, have our gear list and be available for consulting as you decide on all the things you want to do, or maybe come in early. Uh, maybe you want to spend two nights prior to the trip in St. Moritz and, and two nights after in Chamonix, or just do the basic trip, the main part of the trip. Um, we'll make sure that you got all the gear that you need. Uh, it is an alpine environment. And as we ascend, even though we're not at extremely high altitudes, you definitely need the shells and the and this fleeces and, and, and light layers. So you're comfortable when we go into the mountains. Um, we have our nutrition and our training manual. As always, uh, we want people to prepare for their trips and be comfortable when they arrive. I should have a, a, a number of uh, videos on our YouTube channel from uh from the alps and uh if you go on to the video or even playlists probably uh has the features of different all the different days of a number of the different trips over there and things like that but uh, a lot of good videos to check out and uh it really does have something for everyone i think the culture the countries the cuisine the uh the hikes we've really hand selected hikes that um over the years, I've really got to enjoy guiding guests for you know a very long time. And to be able to know what's going to really appeal to them is something I take great pride in. And uh, we definitely put this one together 
with our guests in mind and being able to share the Alps and these three countries uh, with them. So it's fantastic. And like I said, we're hotel based. So every night we're right in the heart of one of those villages. We're right out the door. You can explore. And um, I do want to uh, take some questions here. And um, I just, uh, I'll take some questions. I know, Seth, you're getting ready now. We, we put it another trip since you worked us out of the uh, calendar. We put a, a bike trip together for you for uh, this September. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, and, and that, that's what uh, always amazes me, Dean, uh, from the outset when, when we met uh, in 2010 for Kilimanjaro and did the Machu Picchu and, and all the various trips is that um, while there is uh, a set itinerary, we, we always have uh, flexibility. And so when I started talking about the bike tour or biking and, and so we put it together, we made it happen. And, and Utah, of course, is a fantastic place to do that. And, and I'm inviting all my friends and, and hopefully um, I can give uh, some of my friends, expose some of my friends to worldwide trekking and, and the first class service that you provide for your clients and, uh, and not to stop in Utah, but uh, to, to travel the world. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun. And, and we do uh, in the Alps is another great example, you know, for with six people with families, we can we can offer this trip. My my schedule gets a little booked up. I'm going to see if there's any questions. Doesn't look like I have any questions right now. So we must have hit it pretty good. Um, if you do think of questions, you know, we're always happy to have you call the office. I'm happy to jump on a Zoom or a phone call and talk to you about the details of any one of our adventures. As I said, this trip in the Alps goes uh, pretty much June through late September, early October, we can do it. And um, it's one of those very uh, bespoke trips that we've put together. And uh, you won't find this itinerary on, on other websites because we built this one personally from the ground up. So I do wanna thank Cess for joining us. I look forward to seeing you, friend. As My pleasure. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you again. As I said, you know, like so many of our, our guests, you know, you really befriend each other. Oh, looks like we got a couple questions here. Yeah, somebody's asking about, they logged on a little late. Sorry if you've already said this, but are you hearing about travel to these countries? You know, I, I my girlfriend lives in France, so uh, we've been part for um, uh, the year. And I think like us, they're starting to, uh, see um, the vaccine rollout and countries wanting to get opened up and things to hopefully be getting better. So that's the situation that we're dealing with um, on all of our destinations is when people can feel comfortable. For us, we're hoping by, you know, the summertime and into the fall that we're traveling again and being able to uh, be vaccinated and feel that we're traveling safely and comfortably throughout the world. Um, people are asking a little bit more about COVID situations and traveling to Europe in the summer because of COVID. So, you know, I, I don't really know much more I'd say than, than all of us find out um, from the reading we can do, but definitely uh, we're hoping that things begin to open. I know that uh, they're, in Switzerland, their their ski resorts are opening. They're trying to, you know, resume things safely. And uh, in France, they've been closed in their ski resorts for the winter, so they can hopefully rebound back into uh, summer tourism. So we're keeping a close eye on things. And as I said, Kat does live there, so she's right in Chamonix. She spends a lot of time skiing in Verbier. And um, she's right in the heart of this, in these Alpine villages. So she's the kind of close contact that I have to uh, find any updates when they're happening. So as we know more, we'll let you know more, but that's what we know right now. That's all the questions that I have. Sess, thanks for joining us. Uh, really great to see you. And- um, Thank you, Dean. Thank you. My pleasure. We'll be in touch. And thank you all for joining our destination series. As I said, this will come out on YouTube next Friday. And if you missed one that you'd like to see, join us uh, on YouTube over uh, 
to see any of the ones that we've already listed. But thanks for joining our destination series and have a good day.